application. Done by intention and not by accident. Having the power of willing or choosing. Verichip Corp has presented itself to be the RFID and Plantable Identification Company who preserves and promotes civil liberties and free will. Fantastic news, you say, but let's keep in mind the word voluntary and let's go back to the science of semantics and look up the word Alzheimer's. A progressive form of pre-senile dementia that is similar to senile dementia, except that it usually starts in the 40s or 50s. First symptoms are impaired memory, which is followed by impaired thought and speech, and finally, complete helplessness. The open letter question to Verichip Corp is how does an Alzheimer patient who has impaired thought and memory make a voluntary decision? The answer is self-evident. They can't. And thus the glaring obviousness is that Verichip Corp continues to embrace a smoke and mirrors campaign. By doing this, the lying stud pedigree of Verichip is maintained. On Wednesday, October the 13th, 2004, the FDA approved the Verichip RFID chip for human consumption. The radio frequency identification device contains a 16-digit patient verification number that is transmitted to a handheld radio scanner upon activation. How did Verichip get FDA approved? With the sprinkling of Tommy Magic Dust, of course. The FDA is overseen by the Department of Health and Human Services, which at the time of Verichip's approval was headed by Tommy Thompson. Two weeks after the device's approval took effect on January 10th, 2005, Thompson left his cabinet post and within five months was a board member of Verichip Corp and Applied Digital Solutions. Delving deeper into Verichip's blue closet, we find IBM, who of course denies any current involvement with Verichip, but as history shows, provided Applied Digital, Verichip, the necessary line of credit to continue operations, beginning their relationship in 1999. Go ahead and cue the Twilight Zone music, as now is where it gets a bit strange. Under the forbearance agreement announced on March 27, 2003, with IBM Credit, the behemoth information company, IBM, renegotiated with Applied Digital Solutions, Verichip, and settled the $95 million debt for a once-off payment of $30 million, having supposedly written off the $95 million obligation in 2002. This renegotiation smacks of a covert relationship, as IBM Credit could have liquidated more than 19 million Digital Angel shares to recoup its money. The smoking gun is also evident with the stock options IBM has of Verichip Corp and the fact that Verichip Corporation's Veramed Medical Solutions is now integrated into a hospital demonstration area of the IBM Solutions Experience Lab. This closes the case that the world's largest information company is indeed involved with the human microchipping agenda. Imagine if IBM owned any patents relating to the tracking and tracing of people using RFID. Well, buckle up, because they do. On November 7th, 2002, IBM was awarded with the United States patent number 2002-016-5758, namely, for the identification and tracking of persons using RFID tagged items. This patent includes a method and system for identifying and tracking persons using RFID tagged items carried on the person. Previous purchase records for each person who shops at a retail store are collected by POS terminals and stored in a transaction database. When a person carrying or wearing items having RFID tags enters the store or another designated area, an RFID tag scanner located therein scans the RFID tags on that person and reads the RFID tag information. The RFID tag information collected from the person is correlated with transaction records that are stored in the transaction database according to known correlation algorithms. Based on the results of the correlation, the exact identity of the person or certain characteristics about that person can be determined. This information is used to monitor the movement of the person through the store or other designated areas. With over 2,000 IBM employees dedicated to working on RFID technology, from portal readers to specific applications enabling the tracking of pharmaceutical drugs, food, vehicles, hospital patients, students, and offering financial solutions for a new financial order, one can see the aspirations of IBM to dominate every sector, including the obvious. IBM's aspirations for a smarter planet extend to aerospace and defense, automotive, banking, chemicals and petroleum, consumer products, the list goes on and on. 
IBM claims in the marketing literature relating to RFID that the planet will be interconnected, intelligent. People want it. We can do it. How will IBM's interconnection be achieved? As RFID techs communicate to RFID readers, the readers can in turn communicate and transmit data over telephone or by internet to computers. And of course, satellites. On December 15, 2004, Orbcom announced an application development agreement with Verichip to be its provider of satellite and telecommunication services for applications to be developed for use with the implantable RFID Verichip. The Orbcom constellation consists of 29 low Earth orbiting communication satellites and focuses on M2M, Global Asset Monitoring and Messaging Services. M2M translates to mean machine to machine, man to machine, machine to man, machine to mobile, and mobile to machine communications. Under the terms of the agreement, Verichip and Orbcom will develop and market new military, security, and healthcare applications for use in the United States and around the world. Okay, we now have a patented human implantable microchip a system that allows you to be tracked via satellite, RFID patents for tracking people, IBM controlling a census, financial transactions monitored and recorded. What else are we missing to put the web grid into place? Smart infrastructure, example, RFID sensors and portal readers. How will this be done? By petitioning government, as this example in Australia shows, for IBM to include smart technology and infrastructure spending. IBM's Australian arm, Glenn Borham, stated that the Australian government should embed computer chips and wireless devices in the nation's infrastructure, and that this smart technology was a way of beating the global financial crisis. Mr. Borham says this plan can be implemented if the government works with businesses to create pilot projects in Australia, where we can set up a town, we can set up a small community. He goes on to preach that putting smart devices into cars could solve a lot of traffic problems. If we were able to look at a network of understanding where cars were on a road, that, filtering into computers, could analyze data and do predictions. So that they could say, well, if there's a breakdown here, it will have this sort of flow and effect. We could then actually get information to people in real time. The question Glenn Borham fails to answer is what right does IBM have to propose to put a spy chip into Australian citizens' vehicles without their consultation and consent? Moving along. What else does IBM propose? Let's add a global identity system into the mix. Cal Slimp, the vice president and global leader for security and privacy, stated that an international standards backed up by a UN body are needed to clear up the international identity verification mess. IBM Secure Identity Solutions offer organizations a wide range of advanced identity verification solutions. Capabilities include the use of smart cards, biometrics, RFID, identity management, and security systems. Slimp goes on to say, IBM is trying to create a mosaic for what countries want as good identity management. Wider international cooperation is needed to establish a common language and standards. It is interesting to find out that the common language for exchanging user access information is also known as Federated I Am. This is an interesting choice of terminology at the very least. Cal Slemp went on to more grandiose statements to say, what's missing right now is a trusted third party to authenticate trustworthiness. That's rich. IBM has denied their involvement with the Hitler regime. They've denied selling census data to the Nazis and they now self-appoint their company to be the world identity sentinel. Pass and double pass. As we stand on the cusp of the Orwellian dark age, we need to realize that Verichip is not static technology. When the Verichip was first released, it was a crude RFID solution that posed no threat to civil liberties and humanity. But as the evolution of the Verichip continues, some red flags have been raised. Scott Silverman goes on to gloat, As we continue to build on our partnership with receptors, which started with the development of the glucose sensing RFID implantable microchip, for diabetics to have the ability to measure glucose levels in their body through an external scanner, we are moving beyond patient identification to sensors that can detect and identify illnesses, viruses such as swine flu and other emerging diseases. This is an exciting next step for the future of our healthcare division. This is a concerning development in the Verichip product evolution. First, it opens the titanic diabetic market, and second, the uptake by this sector could be high in providing Verichip the necessary cash flow to penetrate new markets. 
as we have already documented